Hi there, welcome back to the channel. Uh, been quite busy on and off today, done a few things different than normal. Um, I've been getting a lot of loose wood here together, all together, so I can start making a start of them log stores on the other side next few days. Um, I've no shout outs today, uh, I've got none today. I was uh, talking again to Andrew the other day, talking about the old days and that, because we like to have old natters about the old days, two old blokes together, you know what it's like. Yeah. And like he was saying in the old days, the bin men. Now I remember as a kid, the bin men, everyone on our street had the old fashioned metal round bin with the big handles on. And each house, could, you could have as many as bins as you wanted. You could have 10 or 15 bins if you wanted. And then bin men would come, they'd put it on the shoulder, carry it all the way down your drive, tip it in, walk all the way back your drive, put it back in where it was. Because usually most people had like uh, an outhouse where they kept them all, if, if I remember right, next to an outhouse. And they always used to do that. They always used to do your bins. And then the coal man used to come and carry the sacks up your driveway and throw it into your, into your coal bunker for you. Right now, if anybody gets cold, they just leave the sacks at the side of the road. They don't bring them up like they used to do and stick them in the coal bunker. You know, I remember it also, I remember in the old days, the old pie and pea van. Can anybody remember that? They used to come round every, all the houses and they used to park so many places up the streets and he'd, he'd put this music on, like the ice cream van, and then you'd come out with your bowl, you like your cereal bowl, you'd come out with it and you pass it in and you put a pie in it and put your peas in your gravy and charge you I think it was like 50p for pie and pea van back in old days yeah that's brought back some memories I fancy some pie and peas now and I'll tell you what I remember I remember the old pay phones the red ones I know they changed over to the glass BT ones but I remember the old uh, red ones were do you remember when you put the old 2p in it and then it went to the old 5p, then the old 10p, then it was 20p, then it was 50p, then you had to put a pound coin in, and I think it went up to two pound. I don't know what it is now. You have to tell me what it is now, but I know it went to two pound minimum that you got. You had to put in. And then they also had a phase where they had them green cards, didn't they? Like a credit card thing where you like a top up, and you put that into it, and you could make your calls. Yeah, that's going back. Apparently, them cards, what I'm on about, they're very collectible now. They go for a lot of money, them. I remember at the time, we used to be throwing them in the bins all the time as kids. It's amazing all the stuff we threw away as kids that's now worth a lot of money, isn't it? It's unbelievable. It's like, there's lots of other things. I remember as a kid, you'd make your mum a cup of tea. And the tea bags, a simple thing like this, a tea bag in the old days, you'd put it in the water, You'd stir it twice and it'd break the bloody back. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's true that. And like now you put a tea bag in a drink. I bet you can't even remember the last time you brought a tea bag. It's true, isn't it? It's true. It's like I remember when I was at primary school. I'll always remember this day. We was in Mrs. Harry's class, which was class 10. Right? And what it was, it was when they brought out the very first computer, the BBC. And our school, we did a fundraiser and we got one. It was state-of-the-art, this BBC. Now, if you imagine that with a blackboard and there's all your chairs and tables going up there. It used to be desks back then. Each person had a desk with a lid that you lifted up and it was like a tray inside that you could do stuff. Anyway, they're all going back. And right at the back of the room was this computer with this computer table. Well, my desk was at the side of that, just, just in front of it, if you know what I mean and we're all, we're all doing our own work and everything and I were always mucking about anyway I got this elastic band and I pulled the elastic band she, Mrs Harris were behind me at this computer desk with, a, with somebody I think it was Ben or Neil anyway I pulled it like that not thinking I let go and for some reason it shot backwards and it hit her in the face and I heard her go oh! I thought oh crap so I just carried on like this she went right everybody stop everybody stop who has just flicked elastic band in my face, a teacher? And everyone was just quiet. And I thought, I'm not saying no. I'm not saying that. And even my classmates never knew that it were me. Never told anybody. So I'm confessing now. 
and she said right now it was the end of the day just before the bell was going to ring and she said right when that bell goes no one goes home until somebody admits who they've, who's done it never forget it so she said right everybody pack your stuff away and you think about what you've done whoever it is so everyone's putting their stuff away and, away and everyone's going like Emma and all the others are going just say who it is say who it is Emma can go home they're all like that I thought no chance I'm in front of Mrs Beddoes' office yeah mistress so I thought no way so I sat there and I'm carrying on pretending I'm, it's not me anyway the bell goes and she said right everyone sit there so everyone's putting their coats on ready to go and she said right everyone stay and they went wait five minutes right and everyone's going come on to say who it is now please and we can go home I want to go home so the teacher said I am not going to let this class go home until you admit who it is and then she said there's only one person that can go home that I know didn't do it because that person was facing forward and I know and we all went quiet and she said Ian I went yeah she said you can go home because you was in front of me and you didn't flick the elastic band because you'd have had to face me to do it wouldn't you I went yeah yeah she said right I know for a fact it's not you you can now go home anyway I thought nice one result she is me right confident packing all my stuff as I'm walking out the door everyone's going please whoever it is just say who it is me straight through the door and strolling like a king across the car park right proud of myself <laughs> I was only 10 right proud of myself going all the way home when I went to school next day she kept him half an hour kept them half an hour the parents were going crackers afterwards and even to this day until now nobody knew it was me that did it and she would smack behind me it was i don't know how i did it i flicked it instead of going forward it went back and it hit her head in face crazy that isn't it and that's another one of my stories we heard them digging took some splitting didn't it eh? I'll tell you some other things I remember from the old days if you fancy a listen see if you can remember the old grit men now you know when the snow comes out and the frost now they have a grit wagon that comes out don't they and it like filters it out at the back and puts it all over the road well in the old days when I was little they didn't have grit wagons what they had was a big lorry with two men at the back on the top of this lorry and it were all piled up with grit and they'd be there with shovel and then filtering it out at back as the wagon slowly going up the street and there were always two of them that did it one on one side one at other and that's how they gritted the roads as they went up and that's what they did in the old days and I remember when I was younger as well the uh, oh, the old taxis you don't see the old black cabs like you used to do but I'm all about the really old black cabs they look different I don't know if people remember that if you google it you'll see the old black cabs so now before I go because I've nearly done here I just want to say a few things right now you know I have this campaign that I keep talking about getting Britain growing and everything like that and being more self-sufficient which to me it's a big I do want that I want Britain growing I want us well we genuinely aren't relying on as many people in life we're more self-sufficient as a country and I feel that that's really important but while this pandemic's going off and I know there's a self-isolation and everything and it's taking its toll on people they're not coping well with it and I know some people are getting depression but the people who we really should be worrying about is the elderly 
and those who are disabled. Now if you have somebody who lives in your street that's elderly, if you know the phone number, pick up the phone and ring them. That bit of contact will mean a lot to them. Or you literally knock on the door, you stand well back, they'll probably come to the window because they're terrified, you just say I'm well back, come to your door, so they'll come to the door and just say is there anything you need me to get you? Is there anything you want? I'm here for you, I'm only on the other end of the phone and I'll get everything. So simple thing, they might have a cat or a dog and they're running low on dog food or cat food. You know, just simple things like that. Just give them a ring the elderly and make sure the disabled are okay. Because it's times like this as a community, we need to do our bit for everybody. We really do. And before I go, one simple thing. Get Britain growing. So I hope you've listened to what I've said in the last few videos. And you've gone and got yourself your window boxes with veg growing in them putting your seeds in, you dug over some of your garden, there's a bit of a project, all the family involved, and you've started planting taties, that's a Yorkshire way of saying it, taties instead of potatoes, or spuds, so, I do I split that, isn't it? right, that's me done, Right, I'll see you all again tomorrow and think about what I said. Think of the elderly, think of the people who's vulnerable in life and just reach out to them and make sure they're okay. Right, stay safe, stay well and I'll see you again tomorrow back down at the cabin. <laughs>